pass me that ball. Let there be light. Let there be joy, the joy of spring. And whom better than this bright yellow, cloud white, and with its own trumpet-shaped flower to welcome the new season with the fanfare, than the daffodil. The daffodil first brave spring flowers will win sunshine and the promise of the new season to come. Shakespeare celebrated them with a flower that comes before the swallow dares. The daffodil in, Fran in Europe Renaissance became a symbol of love and marriage. The daffodil, symbol of chivalry during Victoria times, today symbol of hope and renewal. The daffodil, official 10th anniversary flower and one of the Welsh national emblems. The origin of the flower becoming the national symbol of Wales appears to be an attractive interloper introduced during the 19th century as a replacement for the Amber leek. David Lloyd George, UK Prime Minister, but also a Welshman, was a public advocate of the daffodil and considered it as a symbol of nature's optimism, which neatly coincided with St. David's Day. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. What was daffodil being one of the best known flower poem in English? The flower was often compared to the beautiful eyes of a beloved woman. Bunch of daffodils offered as a gift ensures happiness and represent good fortune, while the gift of a single bloom predicts misfortune. Something I didn't know as a child, but each spring a group of us would go armed with bucket, string and scissors to the woods as soon as some bright yellow colour came through the undergrowth and go and pick the wild daffodils, make bunches from them and took them as a gift to the village elders, always keeping a bunch for the grandparents and the mums. When the good deed was done, we could then go on the side of the road and sell to passing walkers or even stopping cars. Just another means of increasing our pocket money. My grandfather always reminding me not to be too greedy and leave some bloom to go to seed so as to make sure we would be able to go on picking year after year. He told me the seed would take around five to seven years to produce new flowering plants. The daffodil is the official common name for any plants that falls under the genus Narcissus. This include double flowers, plain or spotted, large yellow trumpet, dwarfs, specimen with sprays of flowers such as the jonquil. There are some 88 different types of daffodil. All these descend from a wild daffodil which has been growing and spread mainly from Spain and Portugal to Northern Europe. The plant is named after the vain hunter of Greek mythology, Narcissus. The story of Narcissus, as we know, is said indeed. A beautiful youth, much adored by every nymph of the forest, had neither eyes nor ears for the, any of the outfelt pleas. He was so vain and self-absorbed that he never ever noticed their pain until one day he passed a clear pool and glimpsed at a beautiful youth and fell openly in love with his own image. In the end he could not bear the heartache any longer and died in a tight embrace with the watery reflection of himself. The strange flower which sprang up where he had died was named after him. The word Narcissus in Greek means narcotic. The unfortunate youth had died of intoxicating self-love that made him blind to any other love and any other beauty in the world. Narcissus are indeed intoxicating and can powerfully 
affect the nervous system. The enchanting smell is mostly used in our glass perfumery. The major quantities of essential oils are produced in the Netherlands, where daffodils have been flowering for a very long time. They were first recorded in 1662. The essential oil is rather strong and eddy. It counts nerve and helps release stress and tension. Narcissus was used from the ancient of time for various purposes. The daffodil in ancient Greek was the personification of death that decorated the deathbeds. The Romans were using the flower for the creation of fragrances and believed the sap could heal wounds, burns, strain and joint pain. The treatments consisted of a piece of cloth spread with a daffodil bowl preparation and applied to the skin. Some people still believe in this treatment, but beware of trying this, as we all know that daffodil sap is very irritant. The Arabs used it in the perfumery as well as to cure baldness. Sorry, I haven't found a recipe for that yet. In India, the narcissus oil, together with the fragrant oils of sandalwood, jasmine and rose, is applied to the body before prayers. Anointing has been a sacred ritual for thousands of years as a means of spiritual refreshment and physical invigoration. This invigorating aspect of the narcissus oil can also increase, apparently, the power of intuition, help reduce fear, anxiety, and mental exhaustion. Narcissus can be called the fragrance of the moon, heightening the feminine mystery and can awake the innate nature of the feminine reproductive system. Mm. The fragrance is both delicate and rich, sweet and floral. The oil is extensively used in aromatic products due to its soothing and stimulating effects. The bulb, leaf and flower are also used to make medicine. Daffodil contains chemicals that help reduce pain. And in part of Mid Wales, daffodils are grown commercially to produce galantamine. Galantamine is used for the treatment of mental decline in mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease and various other memory impairments. But of course, Wales is not the only area of the UK who grows daffodils. The farming of daffodils as cut flower did start in the 19th century. In 1875, William Trevelick, a potato farmer of the Isles of Scilly, was struck by the flowering narcissus on his farm in mid-January. He realized that he could get these early blooms to London markets weeks before they flowered on the mainland. So Trevelick sent about 30 bunches to a London flower market in a hat box. These early blooms were very welcome, so more followed. Realizing this scheme had potential, silly landowner Thomas Darian Smith encouraged his tenant farmer to create bulb forming houses, plant sheltered edges, and make special wooden box for the transport of the flower. He also obtained different variety to ensure longer supply. An industry was born. Watching these boxes going through Penzance gave a farmer in Far West Fell the idea of planting his own bulb fields. The area around Far Fell overlooking St. Mount's Mount is known as the Golden Mile and is still a centre of production to this day. With the south of the country leading the way, it was soon realised the season could be extended by planting bulb further north. Daffodil farming spread first to Lincolnshire, then to Scotland. Using the new railway network to rush the cut flowers to market, farmers could extend the season in April and even in May. The daffodil now overlapped Shakespeare's follows at both ends of the season. 
Planting and picking the crops were traditionally a family business, with the men picking while the women bunched, tied and packed the flowers. Local labour was used, supplemented by itinerant workers. In the late 1950s, around 3,000 people were employed in market gardening year-round in the Tamar Valley in Cornwall. In the spring, daffodil picking season, the number was swelled by a further 10,000 workers concentrating on the famous Tamar Double White. The secret of its success of being double white laid also in its good scent and effect in flower on the Whitson bank holiday. Depending on the scale of the farm and whether it also services the bulb industry, bulbs may be left in the ground for two to four years before being lifted, dried and sorted, with some kept for replanting. However, keeping bulb in the ground for several years make them vulnerable to disease and climate fluctuation. Hardly had the industry set up that it found itself reeling from the effect of daffodil plague in 1917, later identified as due to stem and bulb nematode. Hundreds of acres of bulbs rotted in the fields and the value of farms plummeted. In the interwar period, increased use of glass houses alleviated rot and resulted in more daffodils being produced in Britain than in any other country. But then, the Dig for Victory campaign demanded that land used for cut flowers should be turned into edible crop and the rail transport of flowers was banned. Bulbs such as Fortune, who could be sold for £50 a bulb, were simply tipped onto the verges and field edges, where they still flower today and can be still enjoyed. Daffodils are picked in bird and stored at one or two degrees for their onward journey in the flower market in England and Europe. This method of picking in birds is a change from the past, when then the bloom would be warm to ensure they're open before dispatch. The UK is the world's largest producer of Narcissus cut flower and also produces about half the world of daffodil bulbs. Also, daffodils farming has declined in some area. The UK still produces 90% of the world cut daffodils and export to Europe and the USA. 80% of these daffodils are grown in Cornwall. Nowadays, beautifully packaged bunches of daffodil can be ordered online to be delivered to customer by first class post via air or sea from the Isles of Scilly. A return to the original farm to vase perhaps a service that all started in 1875 with a hat box. With summer beckoning on the horizon, the daffodil will fade away. It will await the return of spring when once again this bright yellow, cloud white and it's with its own trumpet shaped flower will welcome the new season, the joy of spring.